Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Not Me. Thank you so much for tuning back in. Today we will study the topic of popliteal fossa. So what is the popliteal fossa? The popliteal fossa is basically you can say exactly how in your upper limb, just in front of the elbow you remember there was a cubital fossa. Similarly, even your lower limb has a popliteal fossa just behind the knee joint. So it is a diamond shaped depression lying just behind the knee joint and it is more prominent when the knee is flexed. What is in the popliteal fossa? From above downwards so you will see the lower end of the femur and if you guys remember the lower end of the femur's posterior surface was called the popliteal surface of the femur so that's present over here the capsule of the knee joint is present here and the tibia starts over here all right so what are the boundaries and contents of the popliteal fossa the boundaries of popliteal fossa are going to be four as you can see it's a diamond shaped structure hence four boundaries so let's suppose that this is the medial side this is the lateral side this is superior and this is inferior hence what boundaries will be created the supralateral the supramedial the infralateral the inframedial quite simple so the boundaries that are superior will obviously be formed by the muscles of the thigh while the boundaries that are inferior are probably going to be formed by the muscles of your leg so supramedial boundary of the popliteal fossa consists of two muscles there's one really long tendinous muscle called the semitendinosus a part of the hamstrings if you guys remember so semitendinosus second there is the deeper more uh, thicker muscle called the semimembranosus if you all remember semimembranosus was responsible for forming the oblique popliteal ligament and fascia covering the popliteus so that's a quick reminder the supralateral boundary will be formed by biceps as the biceps go and get attached or inserted on the head of fibula hence they are going laterally after originating from the ischial tuberosity so over here you'll find the biceps femoris the supralateral boundary of your popliteal fossa and below the gastrocnemius is the major muscle forming the inferior boundary so the lateral head of the gastrocnemius and the medial head of the gastrocnemius will form the lower or inferior boundary of the popliteal fossa the roof of the fossa will be formed by the deep fascia known as the popliteal fascia and the floor will be formed by the popliteal surface of the femur the capsule of the knee joint and the fascia that covers the popliteus muscle what are the contents of the popliteal fossa the popliteal fossa consists of the popliteal artery everything is almost just named after the popliteal fossa so popliteal artery popliteal vein apart from that if you all remember we talked about the sciatic nerve terminating at the superior angle of this fossa by dividing into the tibial nerve so the tibial nerve is one content and the other terminal branch of the sciatic nerve was the common peroneal nerve common peroneal nerve apart from that we have the popliteal lymph nodes the popliteal fat and two more contents these are the nerves that you need to memorize the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh and the genicular branch of your obturator nerve so overall i have outlined the boundaries and contents of the popliteal fossa so let's talk about the final most important part in the popliteal fossa that you need to know is the relations of the various structures in it most importantly the popliteal vein the popliteal artery and the tibial nerve so guys let's suppose that black represents the nerve the blue marker represents the vein and the blue pen represents the artery so now this is the superior angle of the popliteal fossa this is the lateral angle of the popliteal fossa because the common peroneal nerve has to go here so this is superior angle this is the lateral angle this is the inferior angle of the popliteal fossa and this is the medial angle of the popliteal fossa so what happens is the tibial nerve popliteal artery popliteal vein all these three will traverse the popliteal fossa from the superior angle to the inferior angle so like that in a straight line they will run through the popliteal fossa the order of arrangement of these structures is the most important thing to know what is the order the most superficial meaning the most posterior structure is the tibial 
nerve. The tibial nerve is the most superficial structure. Coming deep to the tibial nerve is your vein. So, after the tibial nerve is the vein. Deep to the tibial nerve lies the popliteal vein and deep to that is the popliteal artery. So, the popliteal artery is the deepest structure of the popliteal fossa. So, this is the order of structures in terms of what is posterior and anterior, what is behind and forwards or what is more superficial and what is deep. What about the medial to lateral relationships? So, this is very important. Let's divide the fossa into three parts. This is the upper part, the middle part and the lower part. In the upper part, the most lateral structure is the tibial nerve. Coming more medially is the popliteal vein. And then finally, most medial structure in the upper part of popliteal fossa is the popliteal artery, the deepest and most medial. However, this is only till the upper part of the fossa. In the middle part of the fossa, all of these come in one line. And finally, in the lower part of the fossa, the entire uh, scenario is reversed. This time, the most medial structure is your tibial nerve. And your most lateral structure is the popliteal artery. All right, and the vein still stays in the middle. So what's important to know is basically the artery and the vein are crossing the tibial nerve throughout the fossa from the nerves medial to its lateral side. So this is very important to know, number one, that the structures that are more superficial are the tibial nerve, then deep to that is the vein, and deep to that is the popliteal artery. From medial to lateral in the upper part of the popliteal fossa, the most lateral structure is the tibial nerve, after that is the popliteal vein and most medial is popliteal artery. In the middle of the fossa, all of these come in one line. In the lower part of the fossa, the structures are arranged. Medially, most medial is the tibial nerve, then the vein, then most lateral is the popliteal artery. So that was all you needed to know about the popliteal fossa. I really hope you understood the concept. Thank you so much for watching.